Hey, what's going on, growers? It's the day after Valentine's Day. I hope everyone had an amazing holiday and shared it with a loved one. Today, we're going to be talking about bud production, what makes fat, dense buds, how to prepare for heavy buds, and lastly, how to grow your own top shelf nugs. Hopping straight in, arguably one of the most important parts in this list, lights. For indoor growers, this will make or break your growth. Obviously, indoors, your light source is the equivalent to the sun for your plants, and if you have ever looked into the sun, God forbid, you know firsthand what intensity the sun brings, so you know what you're up against. Now again, since you're indoors, the lights will be much closer to the plant than the sun would be, so you don't need nearly as intensive a light source. Um, most growers will use HPS or LED lights. Now, HPS lights can be extremely bright and effective while keeping the upfront cost cheap. Most 1,000 watt HPS lights ranging from 40 to 100 bucks. You'll notice these prices are significantly lower than your average LED light, but you might want to watch your power bill, as the money saved could cost you elsewhere. HPS lights also run much hotter than LEDs, so you will need to make sure your ventilation slash cooling system can handle the extra load. Lastly, if you're running HPS lights, you will want to make sure your lights are far enough from your plant or you run the risk of causing light and heat stress, or even bleaching your buds, making them ripen faster and turning them white, which you don't want. Next we have growers favorite, LEDs. Most people enjoy using LEDs because they're more efficient. Often they come with more features such as dimmers, color changers for different stages of the grow. And we'll talk about different colors of light and how they do different things for your plants in a later video. They also draw a fraction of the wattage from the wall compared to HPS lights and have essentially the same intensity. Now LEDs also run much cooler with most cooling with uh, most cooling fine passively from the frame of the LEDs. This decreases the load on your ventilation system, lowering the cost of operation even more. This low heat also will decrease the chances of you heat stressing your plants, and although this does, this does not mean your plant can't suffer from light stress and even bud bleaching, so it's important to keep your LED lights at least 18 to 20 inches away from your grow. LED's upfront costs are a bit higher than HPS, but you will find the investment worth it in the long run from the longevity of the devices and the low power draw. Next, we have our nutrients. Now, we'll be focused on hydroponics for this section and we'll likely do a video on organic nutrients in the future. However, for now, let's discuss synthetics. You will want to make sure your plant is receiving a robust and full feeding regimen to support your beautiful flowers. If you have a strong light, it is crucial to support that high plant metabolism with ad adequate plant and microbe food. I recommend Advanced Nutrients. They have been great for me in the past. As I said before in a previous video, I often don't even need to run them at full strength, which saves me money on buying more nutrients. Now, this does mean the strength of the nudes can burn your plants, especially if they're young. So always feed at half the recommended strength when starting off with a new nutrient line and work your way up to full strength. Although I found that I've never really needed full strength and stopped increasing at around 3 fourth strength. I will link my video on advanced nutrients full lineup right down below so you can check it out and know exactly what you're doing to your plants. Up next, we have training. Now this is a must, must, must if you want to grow potent, dense, even buds. Training is the act of bending or manipulating your plant to show and even out the new growth. The more of the plant that is exposed to direct light, the more fat and even buds you get. Some training techniques range from bending, tying down, cutting or breaking, and even weaving branches in between something called a trellis net. The point of this is to explore more, expose more of the tops to the plant of the plant to direct light, making more and bigger buds than a plant with little to no training. Again, essentially what you're trying to do is make the plant as much of a bush as you can instead of leaving it alone to grow into something that resembles a Christmas tree. This will increase yield, potency, and amount, and a, excuse me, and weight per bud and even greatly decrease the amount of popcorn nugs your garden has. 
Another must for bud, great bud production is CO2 supplement. You guessed it. Just as oxygen gives us and all other animals life and energy, CO2 does the same for plants. It's where they get their carbon from and release that O2 molecule so we can breathe even more. So there's another reason to start growing. You're literally fighting global warming. Think of one big recycling loop. The average CO2 levels in nature are about 400 ppm right now. But in your garden, you want at least 800 ppm. This will add noticeably huge booms to your growth and flower production. Plants will thrive in a CO2-rich environment, especially with intense light and a full feeding routine. I recommend buying a CO2 meter, which can be inexpensive, ranging from 80 to 140 bucks. Most commercial growers enrich their air by burning propane gas, which releases CO2, but can be hazardous and requires a skilled grower to execute safely and effectively. Other alternative enrichment styles do exist, such as powerful fungi colonies in a bag. Fungus are a lot like us in the sense of inhaling oxygen and exhaling CO2, so adding a bag of fungus in your grow room may organically increase CO2 levels. Moving forward, next is the environment of your grow. You want to provide the best environment for your grow the whole way through. In the beginnings of your grow, you want high humidity and temp ranging from 74 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and 23 to 29 Celsius. As your plants get more and more mature, you want to decrease humidity from around 80% at the very beginning of your grow to around 40% by the time you're in flower. You must have a robust ventilation system to avoid mildew and mold, which can completely ruin your grow. You never want old, warm, moist air sitting in your grow room or that's simply asking for problems. An intake fan will also greatly aid humidity and temperature control with your plants and they will thank you greatly for. Lastly, we have the only thing that we can't control, the X factor if you will, genetics. That's right, at the end of the day, we're all just pawns in mother nature's game. You can have everything on this list and some dialed in, but if you've got poor genetics, you just wasted a whole lot of time and money. Making sure you start off with strong, reliable genetics is what will separate you from a grass grower to a top shelf maestro. Getting your seeds or clones from a reputable seed bank is a must if you truly care about your grow and your finished product. Like I said earlier, some things are just investments and you will begin to notice bud that has been cared for and loved for will care and love for you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found today's video informative and helpful. If you did leave a like, it really goes a long way and subscribe for more. I'm going to make your garden green and happy. Good luck, growers. Peace.